time for our cover story and redefining the fight against racism. A powerful discussion being had everywhere. And you may be hearing this term thrown around quite a bit on social media, anti-racist. Deborah Roberts joins us now with more from Expert Minds. And there's a book out there, a best-selling book called How to Be anti-racist. Good morning to you, Deborah. Good morning, TJ. Listen, there's no question we are a country that is in pain, but if there is a glimmer of hope in the midst of all of this, it's the conversations that are springing up lately. I've had them with family and friends and colleagues. Many are not people of color, but they are people with an aching heart and a deep desire to see change in this country and most important, within themselves. For Jamie Jones Coleman, those protests challenging the status quo feel personal. Her husband of 10 years, Reggie, is black, and they're raising two biracial sons, Caleb and Gabriel. My boys are viewed in this world as black. And as a parent, as a white parent of a multiracial child, it's imperative upon me to try and help prepare them for their world the best that I can. Her multiracial family, she says, has opened her eyes. I think the biggest thing that I've realized being married to a black man in the United States today is that when people meet me, they never fear me. Racial disparities and inequities are everywhere, are all around us, are in almost every neighborhood and institution. In his book, How to Be an Anti-Racist, author and professor Ibram X. Kendi offers a blueprint for creating a just society and says change begins with understanding and clearly defining terms like racist and anti-racist. There's no such thing as not racist. In other words, we're either being racist or anti-racist. We're either expressing that the racial groups are equals and we believe that or we're thinking that certain racial groups are better or worse than others. So what does it mean to be anti-racist? What it means to be anti-racist is to express anti-racist ideas, meaning all the racial groups are equals. There's no racial group is better or worse than another. And also to advocate for anti-racist policies. And, and, and these are policies that lead to racial equity and injustice. Anti-racism is a verb. It's a behavior. Jennifer Harvey, an author who writes about white parents raising kids in a just society, says creating a new normal may be uncomfortable, but change usually is. A lot of white Americans might feel afraid or it might feel uncomfortable to start talking about race. But of course, that's nothing like the fear that black families live with all the time. Start speaking. We might make mistakes, but we'll get better at it. For those invested in change, she offers this advice. Educate yourself. This is not the time to ask your black friends or ask your neighbor what you need to know about racism. We can buy black scholars books. We can download and support podcasts. We can watch media that people of color have produced. Donate. Actively support both locally and nationally people of color, businesses, racial justice groups, elected officials. Protest. Show up to stand with people of color in your community who are in the streets fighting for change. And understand your role. For me to listen to people of color, to listen to their experiences, to know their truth as best as I can, knowing that I will never be in their same world, but I can respect that world and I can listen to their words. If there's anything that seems to be different right now is that so many are digging deep and searching for information. Books on justice and uh, equality seem to be flying off the shelves or certainly out of the bookstores. But the experts caution, TJ, as you know, that this can't be a one and done thing, a one book or let's take a look at this one time. Long term commitment, they say, is all about awareness and action. And as you heard in the piece just now, it is anti-racist behavior is a verb and action verb. I thought that was actually very interesting. And Deb, you know it when anyone, anytime something comes up, uh, anyone is accused of doing something, the first thing they say is, I'm not racist. Right. And right. they're saying now, Deb, that that's not good enough that's just right. to say you're not racist. You have to be uh, active these days. And I'm sure you're having a lot of conversations. I'm getting a lot of calls uh, from yeah. white friends kind yeah. of checking in about behavior, if you will. And they're well-meaning, you understand, but um, Deborah, that's not necessarily enough. You getting calls like that as well? 
Yeah, I do. But you know what? I appreciate them too, though. And I understand that, um, you know, the experts are saying, well, that's not the way to handle it. But I appreciate that. And I, I want to be part of the conversation. I don't want to blame people because nobody wants to see themselves as a racist. I get that. But I think we do need to start at that point that we all have some bias. And let's try to figure out some ways to deal with that and to see each other differently, to see you besides more than just the color. Of yes, and it shows at least that they're trying and yeah. looking for a way. Deb, always good to see you. Thank and you so much. I'll be too. talking to you soon. All right. Absolutely. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.